What's up, y'all? Here we go. It's the second season in my Let's Play FVD and No Limits 2 series, and this one is called The Siren Song. Now we're going to find out if I can yap for 15, or 16 minutes and see uh, while I have FVD playing in the background try to explain what's going on here. So here we go, back at the beginning with Blank Slate, and it's all ready to be filled. Um, I like this part. I always like the beginning when everything is blank because I've got a vision in my head of what the ride is going to look like after I finish, and it's really satisfying to, to go from the first video to the last and just take a look at, at how far you've come. I know in the last two things I did, the first one was the... Uh, Something Wicked in FVD and No Limits 2, and the second one was in Planet Coaster, which was Fallen Rocks. In both of those, it was really nice to just see where I started and then see where I ended up. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you this time. So this ride is based on one I did, I think the second park I did in Planet Coaster. And back then, I really didn't know what I was doing. Not that I know now, but I didn't know anything about buildings, making buildings or anything like that. Making coasters was new to me in Planet Coaster. So I think I was using the deciduous uh, landscape and I built a giant giga B&M on the edge uh, where there's a little naturally occurring sort of uh, valley between two cliffs. And uh, without much thought, I really wasn't thinking about the ride so much. It just sort of came out into something I really liked. So I'll show you a picture of it later on. Um, it just had a good flow from start to finish. Uh, so here you can see I'm raising up the anchor point on this coaster just to mimic the, the higher level terrain that we're going to be on uh, later on that we'll need for the, the big drops and so forth. So um, I always did like that ride in Planet Coaster. So I decided to go back and remake it in No Limits to just because I could make it a little more um, realistic. So you can see putting up the, uh, by the way, this video is sped up uh, three times. I tried to speed it up just a bit so that it wasn't you just watching the tedious footage of me uh, adjusting every single angle, every single minute and so forth. But at the same time, uh, you should still be able to see what I'm doing and so forth. But if you have any questions like how did I accomplish something or how did I do something, feel free to leave a comment. And as always, if you have feedback, that's fine. If you're going to have feedback about my shape, though, I'm going to tell you right now, like I said in my earlier videos, I go for roughly the same shape as a manufacturer, but I always look at this as... Um, uh, as if they've licensed their designs or not their designs, but their, their trains, their tracks and so forth. To me, it's similar to the way, uh, Vekoma licensed Aero products and I make it my own. So I'll go for a, something like the shape. I mean, this is sort of being image, this drop. It's not a hundred percent. I could fool around with it quite a bit and come up with the B&M style, but that's just not something that I concern myself with too much. Um, I know a lot of people are really into that. And if you are, that's cool. That's your thing. I don't care. Um, um, I personally prefer to concentrate more on just what I like. Uh, I really try to make a ride with a good flow, um, from start to finish, uh, a very thoughtful, uh, way of riding, uh, up oh, the cat's on me. Let me move. Watch out, Hochi. Uh, a very thoughtful, uh, beginning, middle and end to the ride. So, um, not that you can't do that with correct shaping, but it's just not something that concerns me. So so the idea here is that uh, this ride starts off on a, sort of a cliff and uh, and then it dives down partly down the cliff side and then it, it swoops around a cliff and there's going to be, um, I'm going to put some water down here to try to make an ocean and so forth. One of the things I really wanted to do for this, um, and unfortunately I just don't think I can unless there's someone out here who knows how to do this and could actually do it for me or show me step by step how to do it. Um, what I really wanted to do was have uh, crashing waves down here and like with sea spray and, and, and all that kind of thing with like rocks, the, the waves crashing against the ocean. I just don't think that's possible in No Limits 2 or if it is, it's, it's well beyond my ability. So what I'm going to do instead, I think a, a w good workaround is this. I know that I can increase the wind speed a great deal in No Limits 2 and it'll at least create some ripples on the water if I remember correctly. 
So what I'm going to do is use, I think it's Best Danny. I'm not 100% certain about that. Um, but when I do use it, I'll actually look it up so I can give the person credit. Excuse me. Uh, the sound spear. Uh, I'm going to use that to put the sound of the ocean around the track. So we're going to have the sound of crashing waves. Hopefully that won't look too incongruous with the actual flat water. We'll see. Um, but we're going to use the sound of crashing waves, some seagulls, some wind, maybe a little rain. And I think that will at least create the atmosphere in the background to, to give the idea of what I'm going for. And of course, since this is uh, based on, um, I guess, sort of based on Greek mythology, uh, the siren song uh, refers to the sirens who were uh, some sort of demigods or something like this, some sort of monsters in Greek mythology who sat on islands or rocks or, or something out at sea and sang a song that was so beautiful that it lured men to their or sailors to their deaths. Um, and, uh, if I remember correctly, I'm really going back here with my Greek mythology. If I remember correctly, uh, Jason and the Argonauts, I believe Jason came up with a plan to how he could hear the song, uh, without actually dying. So all of his crew members, uh, covered their ears, I guess, with sheep's wool or something like this. Uh, I don't know if, if that's the actual myth or if I, or if that's the actual story and, or I'm just assuming that it was with sheep's wool. Um, but all of his men, uh, put sheep's wool in their ears so they couldn't hear. And, uh, Jason had them lash him to one of the masts. And so then he told them, no matter what I say or do, don't let me free from this mast until we pass the danger. So, by doing so, Jason was, uh, they sailed right by the sirens who were singing their songs and Jason was able to, uh, hear the song, but not actually die from it because otherwise he was begging the men, let me go overboard. Let me go. Let me go. What's wrong with you? And of course they wouldn't do that. So he got to hear the song. So, uh, it just dawned on me that I should probably then include, I do intend on including, uh, a helix at one point that will dive into a rock tunnel, um, and, and hopefully I can include some sort of song in there, some sort of otherworldly sound. I don't know exactly what it'll sound like. We'll figure that out when we get to it. But it just occurred to me I should probably put some uh, shipwrecks and so forth around there. That would make a lot of sense. So since we're not in Planet Coaster, what this is going to entail is me having to download a lot of stuff from uh, the warehouse in uh, what you call it. Uh, Blender, not Blender, SketchUp, uh, because I can do 3D buildings in SketchUp, nothing too detailed. I can do very simple stuff, but I just don't have the patience to do that. Um, I've got a lot of ideas brewing right now, and I don't know that I want to spend months on this trying to build perfect things. I'm sure I can find some, um, shipwrecks and so forth in SketchUp or ships or just, uh, floating lumber or something like that. So naturally I'll credit the people who did that, um, and one thing I do need to decide is what kind of environment I want this to be because the story comes from Greek legend. Um, originally, though, I was thinking of more of a sort of a New English, New English, New England-ish vibe to this coaster. Uh, I was thinking about maybe putting some some houses around that look sort of New Englandish, and uh or else the Pacific Northwest of the United States any sort of seafaring town but I was picturing something much more northerly um but now that I'm thinking about it the the legend is from Greece so maybe I'll go with a more tropical not tropical but certainly a more Mediterranean look to it which might be fun. I don't use palm trees and so much, so forth, so very often because that's just really not my thing. I don't particularly like being hot. I mean, now we're getting into personal stuff, but I prefer cooler weather. I prefer being where it doesn't get so hot and so forth. And I lived in Florida for a long time. Um, so I know what it's like to live in those regions, but it's just not my particular thing. So 
Every now and then, though, I'll do one just because it's fun to see a, a park or a ride or something like that that is in a, a climate where there are lots of palm trees and warmth and so forth. Which, by the way, you should check out my POV of the uh, wing coaster I did, the B&M wing coaster I did called, uh, what is the name of that ride? I can't even think about it anymore. The Outrigger. Uh, I wanted something when I did that ride that was uh, totally different from most of the bird themes that people do. Um, or flying, and, and it really did just remind me of an outrigger. And the way I uh, I did a whole skybox and everything, it really turned out well. I liked that ride a lot, and I used a lot of uh, props from the SketchUp warehouse. So give it a look if you get a chance. Um, and that was, I think, probably the last time I did anything with a lot of palm trees. I know I did another coaster called L'Avion, which is French for uh, the airplane, because it is obviously based on the right airplane. Uh, and I know I set that on the... the French coast here, by the way, is a picture of the ride in, uh, planet coaster that I'm basing this on. Um, so I'm going to build that sort of, uh, terrain right there and so forth. So I think it's going to come out. Well, I don't know if I'm going to do another ampersand turnaround. I think I'm going to do a helix instead. All right. So yap, yap, yap. I've told you all the backstory, told you where we might take this ride. We'll see. Um, I definitely have some good ideas about how I'm going to make uh, the rock cliffs and so forth. I think that's kind of difficult to do in um, No Limits, but I know a pretty easy way to do it, actually. So, so, so far we built the first drop. We built a nice bunny hop, I guess we're going to call it. It's certainly an airtime hill. It's sustained airtime. And then the coaster quickly changes directions to the left and curves up onto this cliff uh, face and up to a level area up here. So I'm trying to get it turned around because the next big thing, the next thing that's coming after this is a big drop back into the valley. So this part, I don't know if I'm going to keep this or not. I am emulating sort of uh, uh, Fury 325's turnaround in a way. Obviously, this is much lower because this is supposed to be close to ground level here because it's going to be high up. Um and it kind of looks like a wave turn, too. It takes me just about a minute to get it right here. One thing I should say right here is that I use the return to zero function. I was looking at a, a thread the other day and people talking about they don't really use the return to zero function. I think it's it's appropriate in cases like this where I'm just playing around trying to get the exit from this turn right, uh, get everything correct. So I put the return to zero function in and then I'm going to hand roll it just because I think it works a little bit smoother. Generally, if you have... A big change in direction like that, or a big roll like that, the return to zero uh, function, it kind of looks a little bit, uh, eh, I don't know, it just doesn't work quite right. So I tend to do that by hand, I get it as close as possible, and then what I'll do in the piece after that is use that as the return to zero. So instead of going from, say, a 90 degree bank to zero, I'll go from a point one degree bank to zero, um, and that works way better. So what I'm setting up here is the next huge hill. Up to this point, uh, the flow is you go down the first drop, you go over the sustained airtime hill, start curving down around the cliff sides all the way to the bottom of the ocean, change directions real fast, go up the, the cliff face, and then we're going to go into this sort of, I guess we're calling it a, uh, what am I going to call this thing? We'll call it a wave turn, bunny hop, I guess. Uh, and then the coaster is going to go, the track is going to go high. It goes up to about 236, 37 feet, somewhere right here. Uh, I start off, as soon as I get this all finished, I start off uh, with a, a floating airtime, about zero Gs, because normally that's what B&M does. Um, and then I do something that I like to do quite a bit on rides, which is I increase the the negative Gs. So... Towards the top of the hill, it's it's sustaining about a uh, nice float, zero Gs. And then I increase the negative Gs down to about negative five, I think, negative six. I like ejector airtime. And I like the fact that, um, so it's floating over the top and then it gets sharper and it pulls you down. Which, by the way, yesterday I rode Sky Rush again. I love that ride. Um, the first drop on that thing is amazing. If you have not ridden it, you need to get a chance. You need to, to really go ride it because, uh, the first drop, what it does is just so incredible. It, it's already, you're already receiving ejector air as you go over the top. And then, um, from what I understand, from what I've read online, the radius of the curve 
changes and you you really just get thrown even farther than you possibly think you can even if you're stapled in the seat it does not matter so that's kind of a feeling i'm trying to emulate right here you can see that it does change of course it does look a little bit strange but i don't care it works really well especially when something is going down into a valley or something like this is so we're almost to the end here on the first half of this ride uh, I chose to end it here because I thought uh, I'd made some good progress. What I'm going to do after this is finish up the the rest of the ride, I think. And this, by the way, is probably going to be a fairly short ride because the station stands at 122 feet above actual ground level in this game. And this drop right here is at 230, blah, 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 236, like I said. So, uh, it's got to get back up the, the cliffs and back up to the station. So we're going to have a little bit of out and back run right here, and then it'll zoom up the, the cliff side and back towards the station. So now I'm just kind of riding it back and forth, see how I like this drop, et cetera. Um, uh, overall the flow on this is good. I think this is going to turn out really great. So definitely keep watching. I think you're going to enjoy this once it's all finished. I think you're going to enjoy seeing it created. Um, where are we at? 15. Okay. We just got about 30 seconds left to go. All right. So I'm going to have more videos of this coming up. I'm going to have, uh, some coaster reviews. I am going to Six Flags America tomorrow. I'll have some video of that sooner or later. So there's a lot coming up on the channel. So be sure to stay tuned. Uh, otherwise, uh, thanks for watching. I will see you next time and enjoy the ride.